Episode 9, Locked Powers. Lily followed Marcus. As she got in, she could see her reflection on the tiles of the flowers. It looked like they had newly bought the palace. It was humongous. The chandelier on the ceiling was so huge, with uncountable lights on it. But her mind still thought about the handsome dude she saw on the second floor. She wanted to stop Marcus and ask who he was. But she was too scared of the psychopath Marcus. Lily wanted to climb the stairs and tour the entire palace, but Marcus halted at the cornermost room. Your suitcase is inside. This will be your room for a month. Couple of things to keep in mind. One, do not step out of the palace without permission, especially before sunrise. Two, do not come upstairs until I take you to. The owners reside above, and they don't like unnecessary interruptions, including me. And three... He walked closer. Lily tried to take a few steps backwards. He pinned her on the wall. Lily could feel his chest on her face. He bent down towards her face, his lips just a few inches away from hers. The strong fragrance of his perfume muffled her from all corners. And three... Be ready whenever I call you. Whenever. He smirked and got back. She could hear him chuckle when he walked outside. Lily stood numb. Her breathing got heavier. Even though he had left the room, his strong perfume stayed. She thumped her left foot on the floor. Damn it, asshole. What does he think he is? Owners? Such a classist and misogynistic human being. Lily rolled her eyes and closed the door. On the bulky bed covered with a satin bedsheet, she saw a covered tray in between. What is that? Lily thought and uncovered the tray. The smell of freshly prepared steak with salad and orange juice gave her a pleasant smile. She held her growling stomach and picked up the glass of juice. Lily comforted herself on the bed and took a bite of the steak. It was delicious. She had not had a steak as tasty as that. Finally, when the plate was half empty, she saw a similar-looking card on the plate. Lily wiped her hand and picked it up. On it was written, Now that you are here, you will have one hell of a ride. But if you break any rule, you will be punished so bad that you will forget going back home to your mama. Lily read the message in Marcus's tone. She felt insulted. She drank the orange juice at one go and thought about the handsome man whose room was just above hers. Lily got up and threw the card in the bin. She walked towards the curtain and pulled it apart. The view took her by surprise. The sky was hardly visible. There were so many long trees that she could not see the dark sky. Just then, a question popped into her mind. Was I not standing there when I saw him? Lily raised her head and looked at the ceiling of her room. This means... His room is just above mine. The thought of it made her heart dance. This time, pleasantly. Even Marcus made her heart palpitate. But that was because of fear. This felt different. This felt pleasant. Even though she had seen him for just three seconds. Blake stood at the glass wall. Seeing the beautiful woman quivered his heart. He raised his muscular hand and rested it on his chest. The heart was thumping unusually. What is happening to me? I thought I was asexual. Blake could not get that innocent face of the woman out of his face. Her pink jumpsuit exposed her thighs, but the overcoat covered her from the wind. Her hair was tied in a ponytail. The innocence in her eyes made Blake want to see her again. He exhaled deeply and thumped his foot. What the hell is happening to me? I don't want to turn into Marcus. Just as he thought about his brother, he hastily turned away from the window. The thought that he would do dirty stuff to the young lady made Blake feel uncomfortable. That is enough, he muttered and strode out of his room. Marcus was at the hall, puffing a cigar. Good, I found you here, Blake said. Marcus did not turn back. He giggled. Who is that woman? That woman you brought here? Marcus kept smoking. 
After making a beautiful puff ring, he put down his cigar and turned to his little brother. She is different, isn't she? Blake rolled his eyes. Because she is young. Marcus smiled. I like young Pooh. Blake interrupted him midway. Brother, you can't do that to her. Marcus laughed. <laughs> Why? Do you want to? Blake heaved a sigh angrily. I just can't talk to you right now. He turned back to go to his room, but Blake halted at one point. Then, without turning back, Marcus, please do not use a young lady like her. Just as Blake started walking, he heard Marcus's response. She is a human, not a werewolf. Blake stopped walking. What? He turned back hastily. What do you mean she is a human? Marcus laughed. There is no fun with werewolf women anymore. Blake was breathing angrily. Do you have a clue what happens to a human if we use them? I know it very well. Blake stared at Marcus with disgust. You will not stoop so low. I will not, but you will. Blake was confused. Me? I brought her for you. Blake rolled his eyes. Is it one of the father's wishes? Marcus's tone became serious. How else would you get your powers? You are the youngest son of our clan. You must get your powers soon. And that can only happen if you mate with a virgin human. Blake clicked his tongue. Shut up with the nonsense already. I will not use someone else's life for my selfish needs. I am better off without any power. Blake strode to his room and shouted. I will not use her. Get that in your head. 